Let's face it, talking about money with friends is awkward. Whether it's splitting the bill at dinner, taking a trip for a milestone birthday, or asking a friend to be in your wedding party, when money is involved, there are all kinds of unspoken rules. It's important to have open and transparent lines of communication about money because confusion, shame, unspoken preferences, and expectations can almost certainly lead to conflict. So we wanted to find out the best way to initiate these conversations that lead to mutually beneficial outcomes. So we know there's like a spectrum of, I call it heaviness when it comes to financial topics. There's the basic, you know, budgeting, should I comp you? Should we split this Uber conversation? And then there's like estate planning and like (laughs) health directives all the way on the other end of the spectrum. Do you have any tips for people who want to have deeper conversations with their friends or their neighbors or people in their lives about some of the things that are important to them, how to move along that spectrum? Like, is there an easy way to say, you know what, I'm tired of just talking about how much the meal was tonight. I'd like to talk about something more meaningful or deeper, like how we're preparing for our child's college, or I'd like you guys to be, you know, guardians if something were to happen to me, things like that. Goals, I think, are always a really great way to back into a financial conversation, regardless of who you're having it with. So being able to share financially what a goal is of yours that you're trying to achieve. And then also that can lead into this is what's standing in my way or using it as a moment of vulnerability. If I like, okay, I want to buy a house in the next two years and I'm trying to save up for a 20% down payment, let's say. And, you know, that means that unfortunately I can't also afford to go on this college reunion trip that everybody wants to be doing. Or it could be, I want to do that. So I'd love to have just sort of like a deeper conversation of how did you guys afford to be able to buy a house? Cause I'm feeling really stressed. You know, especially if you are having questions about how your friends are able to do certain things that you feel like are unattainable to you. I'm not saying they're going to be honest with you or give you all the information, but being able to be vulnerable and come from a place of here's what I'm trying to achieve. Here's what I want to do. When it comes to heavier things like mortality. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) I... I actually love having those conversations. And I think that that's sort of like a funny part of it is my friends know I have no problem talking about death. And like all my family members know this. I am fully aware I'm going to die one day. Here's how I want my ashes spread. By the way, I want to be cremated. This is what I want to have happen. Here's where my life insurance policy is. Like I am game to talk about it. I also totally understand I'm not normal in that regard. (laughs) And I think though, sometimes it really helps break the ice to just like bluntly make a comment about it, depending on who the person is that you're talking to. And it's very funny with, especially, so like my parents are also like very open and blunt about having these conversations. So I know all the information about estate planning. It like, we sat down and had like a full two hour meeting about it recently. Great my in-laws, it has been a slow burn of years. And I think that that is a big part of it is looking at when are your windows of opportunity to bring it up in a natural way. So for instance, when my mother-in-law's father died, she was in charge of handling the estate. And I didn't bring it up immediately, but shortly after she kind of made a comment about a particular challenge she was having with settling the estate. And I said, I'm curious though, do you two have an estate plan? Because you should be thinking about how the kids are going to handle it. And that really started, and it's been like two years since then of like every couple of months, just sort of bringing up something else in the process and looking for a window of opportunity. Like if there's a conversation about, a friend who had something happen. There's a conversation about maybe a health scare that came up. Oh, do you have an advanced healthcare directive? Do, does Scott, like, does your husband know what you want done if you can't make a decision? If if something happens to both of you, do one of the kids know? Like, you don't want to be putting us in this position where we're just trying to guess. And the other way that I love to reframe these conversations when people are resistant is, I believe very strongly, and the language that I would use here is, 
I see this as one of the greatest gifts of love that you can give me, that in a time of grief and stress, that I'm not having to also try to figure out what you want or what you wanted. So if you could just take the time to tell me, and maybe we can go talk to somebody together. Also, if you've not done your estate planning, go with your parents, two for one. Like, let's just bang both of these out. And then they have a buddy system and great, we're accountable to each other. And when it comes to things like a guardian for a child, give the person an out. Like not everybody necessarily wants to take on that responsibility. (laughs) So it also is bringing up, you know, hey, this is what we're thinking. This is what we've laid out. This is why we would love to select you as the guardian as we're creating our will. I want to give you some time to think about it. So if you could just let me know what your thoughts are or what your concerns are, and then maybe we can have a longer conversation. And then like, let them have some time to think about it. Don't ask for an immediate yes. As uh, somebody who's kind of been in that conversation before, I'm like, oh, oh, okay. Um, <laughs> if I could just have a second. Because <laughs> particularly, <laughs> if you don't live near family members, that's a part of the big question here, is if you don't live near family members and they're asking you and you don't live there, The question also becomes, are we moving to your kid? Would your kid move to us? Like, what's the expectation here? Like, am I expected to move out of New York City to a completely different town where I don't have a job or friends or connections to take care of your child and vice versa when you're asking somebody else? Yeah. Yes, I'm like being brought back to like an instance in my life where I'm like, you're absolutely right. (laughs) Because I went through that because you were talking about, um, you know, like not basically bum rushing someone, but it's, it's something that I did personally, right? But like, I was super passionate about money and my own financial journey. And I was in a rush to have this conversation with this girl that I met at work, this one, <laughs> and I was ready to go, right? I was ready to get financially naked, if you will, right? And like revealing it all. And she was like, not warmed up at all. She was like, dude, no. like, what are you talking about? Like, <laughs> like, I, was, I had it all laid out, ready to go. But I think, you know, when people find themselves like in these moments, they get so passionate, so um, empowered, if you will. And they're like all dressed up and ready to go, you know, and it, it sort of exacerbates sort of the, the problem a little bit. It actually makes things a little bit more difficult. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's not necessarily uh, inviting for the other person to, to be vulnerable. Well, even in the get financially naked process that I lay out, the first step is to warn your partner that it's coming. It's to not just Mm -hmm. say like, we're going to do this now. Let's go. It's to say, I I want to have this conversation. When is a good time for us to sit down and have this conversation? Because you also want them to be able to get their thoughts together about what they're comfortable sharing, what they want to know from you, all of that. And yes, so that there's a little bit of a warm up because... Those of us who super enjoy talking about money or even just kind of like slightly uncomfortable conversations like mortality. I am very aware that most people don't feel that way. So if you're given an in, if a friend especially like keeps bringing up certain money concerns, then I think it gives you an opening to say, you know, I've noticed that you've brought this up a couple of times. Do you want to sit down and have a conversation about it? parent, sibling, friend, partner, like coworker, anyone really, if, especially if you're somebody who is passionate about talking about this topic, which if you're listening to this podcast, I'm guessing that you are. <laughs> or you're about to be. <laughs> we hope you enjoyed this episode of Cashing Out the Podcast. To see more videos like this, subscribe to our YouTube channel and be sure to turn on your notifications. To get your copy of Cashing Out the Book, visit Amazon.com, Barnes & Noble, your local bookstore, or download the audiobook on Audible.